Invece se non ci no, ok. Allora, ragazzi, yesterday we have spoken about uh, the regular verbs and we said that uh, the regular verbs they are just the verb that follow the rule of adding the or ed to the past form. And today's session we'll be speaking about how to use uh, the irregular verbs. Of course, uh, the irregular verbs they don't have a specific rule while changing into the past. And we tell or we say that they are called irregular verbs only because they don't follow the rule of adding the D or the ED into the past. These verbs, they can be many, many forms or take many, many shapes, but we can actually identify them according to one specific thing. There is only one thing that we can do to the irregular verb. Okay, the only thing that we can do to the irregular verb is just to categorize the verbs. We can categorize the verbs in just three categories. The first one we call it no change verbs. The second one we call only one change verbs and the last one bullet to change verbs for those who just join us in today's session we're speaking about the irregular verbs and the irregular verbs what, Muhammad? There's like nobody here. Oh, well, there is no problem for me. So, the irregular verbs, they are to be categorized into three categories. The first one, we call it no change verbs. The second one, only one change will have into the verbs in the past and the past participle. And the last one is uh, the two change verbs. For the no change verbs, we may say, for example, the verb put in the present, in the past it will be put also, and in the past participle also put. For example, the verb put. In the past, it's also hit, and the past participle also hit. That's why we call them no change verbs. No change verbs. Only because there is no change that happens during the present or the past or the past participle form. On the other hand, we have one change verbs one change verbs verbs that change only one time like for example pie 
or for example catch so buy and catch in the past buy will become code and catch will become code and the same thing will happen in the past participle form that's why we call the only change at one time we call them one change verbs one change verbs or one time change verbs the only change one time and the last type of uh, the verbs is called the two change verbs like for example eat or do for in the past we have ate and and for the past participle we have eaten and or made 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 that's two change verbs so here just do this Simply, there is no rule for the irregular verbs that we can follow. All we can do is just to have this. We can just categorize them into these three forms or three categories. The no change verbs, verbs do not change in present, past, and past participle. The second category is uh, one change verbs, only the verb that change one time in the past and past participle form. And the last is the two change verbs, which are the verbs uh, that change uh, multiple times, uh, one time in the past and another in the past participle. But after all, all these verbs must be memorized. If you went to the course materials on Coursera. You can find the list of the irregular verbs that I have uploaded. So in today's session, we are speaking about the irregular verbs, and once again, we're calling them irregular only because we do not follow the rule of adding the or ed in both past and past participle form. And as they do not follow that rule, we call them irregular verbs. So many of the common verbs are irregular. Their past and past participle form are created by changing the spelling of the present form. You may need to memorize the correct form of the irregular verbs or check even a dictionary entry for the verb. The chart below shows three different types of the irregular verbs. We have some verbs, they are the same in the past and the past participle, like buy and say, bought, half bought, and said and half said. Same present past and past participle, that's the no change verb, coast, 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 put, 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 hit, 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 lit, 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 cut, 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 all of these verbs. They do not change in the present, past, or past participle. And change in another way, like pick, broke, broken, ring, rang, rung, do, did, done, eat, ate, eaten. All of these verbs also called the do change verbs. So we can only categorize the irregular verbs in only three categories. Yet we must memorize the spell. Of the irregular verbs. In practice A, we are asked to write the forms of present, past, and past participle of these verbs. Okay, will someone help me? Or shall I just answer alone? Number one, speak, spoke. The past participle form is what? Quickly, anyone you can type in the chat. 
have spoken. Have spoken. Bank road have ridden. The scribe crust crust yes have burst yes no change verb no plank have known new no new have known Swim, swam. Swim, swam. Shake. Uh, Shake. Have shaken. Sit. 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 Have. Sit. No change. Forget, forgot, have forgotten. Sing, sang, song. Hurt. 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 So, these are some of the irregular verbs, and as I told you, you'll find the list for the irregular verbs on the course materials on plus area. That's going to be better for you. To just memorize even five verbs a day. It's gonna be very, very handy. And uh, number two, correcting of irregular verbs. Rewrite the sentence in order to replace the underlined verb with the correct form of it. The team chose the, a new captain. So instead of the choose, the team it chose a new captain. And number two. Trees that flow through the trees. So instead of the float, what is the so 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 no. And number three. We have win the, the championship. So of course there is no win. It's we have won the championship. And number four. I have not sleeped for days. Of course, there is nothing called sleep. Let's just let And imagine that's a past participle, not past simple, because of that. And here we have one also past participle. What animal make the, these uh, prints? Of course, instead of make, the, it's me. And number six, we have the first fire has breaked out in Montana. So instead of break, that's 
have stroke in Howard and Montana. And in number seven, Baba B hold it out its pole. It's held out its pole. Last but not least, Lisa set it the, the kick on the table. So Lisa set the kick on the table. Of course, the lesson is far more easy. All we just need to do is uh, try to memorize some of the most uh, common. Shapes All right, of course, all of these uh, pages, the regular verbs and the regular verbs will just uh, help us in page 80, which is uh, our lesson today. Identifying the six basic forms of the senses. Perhaps the previous page was pretty easy to be solved, but this page is really, 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 really important one. So speak today about uh, the basic six forms uh, of uh, the senses. Uh, of course, we have some basic forms for the tenses. In our language, English, we have many, many tenses. Each one of these tenses has its own specific usage that uh, distinguishes each tense from the other. We have the present simple, we have the past simple, the future simple, the present perfect, the past perfect, and the future perfect. These are uh, to be called the basic six forms but of course we have uh, many other uh, forms and many other tenses uh, for english like the present progressive or present participle uh, you have the past participle or past uh, uh, progressive you have the future simple the future progressive all of these verbs or all of these tenses held in a specific uh, usage so we have some main uh, tenses in English or some basic tenses in English. Present, past, future, present perfect, past perfect, and also future perfect. We call them the main or the basic forms of tenses because from them we can drive many other tenses. Like from the present sample, we can drive present participle or uh, present perfect participle from the past to the same the future the same and to the rest of the tenses so the question here is how can i know the the tense which you are speaking about of course each tense of these tenses has its own uh, form its own form means uh, the way that we can write a sentence in it for example uh, i need any any sentence mm -hmm. uh, i am cool i am what cool i'm cool okay so this sentence in hamad is in which sense Present. That's a present. Great. How can we put 
this sentence into the past. I I I was cool. Nice. Which is not true. He's still cool. Hyper theory. I was cool. Now we change it from present into past. What about the future? I will be cool. I will be cool. What about the present perfect? What's present that? Perfect. Present perfect consists of subject plus the auxiliary verb have or has. I'm being. The past I'm, I, I have been cool. I have been. That's present. Wait, is it have been past? No, not past. Present perfect. There is a huge difference. Huge difference okay. between the past and the present perfect. And I'm gonna tell it to you. Yeah, this, this is why I can. This is the exact plus that I hate. Present, after, after, whatever, after future. It's like there's three, and then there's like multiple stupid ones. Okay, why do we have multiple tenses or many tenses in English? Put this in your mind. Only because we have a specific usage for each tense. Specific usage. The use we are using for the tense is very, very specific and different from one to another. And I'm going to show you that right now. Let's just make this sentence into the past perfect. Past perfect. So past perfect is actually the same like the present perfect. But instead of have, put the past of have. What is the past form of have? As. No, has is still present. Has is present, but had is the past. We use has with the singular subject, like when we say he. So he has. But the past for have and has is had. I had been cool. That's past. And finally, for the future perfect, future means will. And perfect means have or has and past participle. So, I will have and past participle. Then, that's future perfect. All right, so now I'm becoming super confused. Why do we use these tenses? Present, past, future, present, perfect, past, perfect, and also future, perfect. And how can I differentiate among all of these tenses? Okay, so number one, the present simple, we use it to state a fact or a habit. A fact or a habit. Like a fact that the earth is round. The sun rises in the east. Water boils at 100 degree Celsius. So all of these states or states are facts. I have it like I attend my classes every day. I do whatever the teacher told, and that's not a fact. Not okay. <laughs> have it. I go to the gym every day, I play with my friends. So we use this tense in order to state a fact or a habit. Okay, mention this is very important, guys. Once you are capable of identifying the usage of each tense, you will know how to use this tense properly. For the past, let's just bring this here. Of course, in the past, it's past. So, an action, to speak about an action, of course, that is completed. Completed means finished. 
And by that, I need you to just imagine this. The blank page. Imagine that we have a lion for time. Here we have the past. Here we have the future. And in the middle here we have the present. If you are to speak about the present simply, if you are to speak about the present simply, in this case, in the present, you you will find out that all the action that you are speaking about the present, you are speaking about a fact. So something that happened in the past, yesterday, the day before yesterday today now something so because you are speaking about a fact or a habit then the action itself which you are speaking about happens regularly each time it happens i'm cool i was cool yesterday in the past i'm cool today and i will be cool tomorrow so action that regularly or frequently happens on the other hand while speaking, for example, about the past symbol. If I said I was cool, it means that this actually happened here in this place and finished. The action, which is me cool, or I finished my meal, or I visited my friend, any action in the past only happens in this area. Finished and completed. Finished and completed. For the future one, it's also pretty easy. On the other hand, from the past, which happened and completed, the future will happen in the future. So, still didn't happen or not in the process of being happening and also will happen in the future. Something will start or happen in the future. Coming to the confusing one. What about the present perfect? What about the present perfect? To differentiate between the three, we'll just need to draw another one. For example, in this place. Yes. Let's go here, for example, or choose the one. So once again, that's a previous line. Let's imagine that this is a timeline. We have here the past, present, and the future. In this case, while speaking about the present perfect, I have been cool. Where exactly do you think this action will be on the timeline? In this area, or here, or in this area? I have been cool. <laughs> Which area? Just give me your wildest guess. In a different timeline. In a different timeline. Look, it's actually the same timeline. But we use the present perfect Muhammad to speak about an action that started in the past. So you're speaking about action that started in this area here. Started in the past. But it did not finish because if it finished in the past, it will be past symbol. But on the other hand, this action which started or began in the past actually is still happening up till the moment of speech. So if you said, I'm cool, it means you are cool in present. I was cool, it was in the past and finished. I'll be cool, this will happen in the future. On the other hand, I have been cool, mean that since a specific time in the past up till the moment of speech you are cool okay that's why we call it present 
perfect. Prison, something that is happening in prison, and perfect. The word perfect means completed or finished. So something that is started in the past and is still happening right now. And another example to understand that, that why, for example, I say, I have studied English for seven years. So you started your action seven years ago in the past. You started your action seven years ago in the past. And the action is still happening at the moment of speech. I have studied English for seven years. I have learned Japanese since 2002. So all of these actions, because we are using the present perfect, it means that the action started back in this place in the past and is still in the action or process in the present. So all of that time is to be included in the action all of this time. Since the specific time you are speaking about in the past until the moment of speech. On the other hand, the past participle form I had been cool, you will never see a sentence like this in English. I had been cool. Unless it will be associated with another sentence, because there is only one specific usage for the past perfect. And this usage, that's our timeline. Past, present, and the future. In this case, actually, you will have two actions in the past, finished and completed. When you are using the past perfect, you must have two actions in the past, not only one action, but expressing two actions. First action and let's bring the orange. Ah no. first action and a second one as you can see here both actions are finished and completed but we only use this action to speak about uh, arranging which action happened first and which action happened next to understand that fully i'll say after I had played football, comma, I took a shot. So, in this case here, we have two actions. I had played football, and I took a shower. We use here the past perfect to indicate the action that happened first. So it means that the action that happened first was playing football. And after you played football, the action that happened next to it was uh, having or taking a shower. Wait, wait teacher, there's six, six tenses? Uh, no, there are more, but these are the main six tenses. We still have present, 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 just the present, 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 No, that's in Arabic. That's in Arabic. In Arabic, we have only three, present, past, and future. But in English, once again, we have many tenses because of one. Each one of them has its own specific usage. Each tense has its own specific usage. Once you are capable of identifying 
what is the usage or when does the action happens or happened or will happen, then you just are in the cold zone. For the present, the one in blue, something that happens regularly to speak about a fact or to speak about a habit. For the past simple, happened, started in the past and finished in the past. That's why you call it past simple. For the future simple, will start in the future and will end in the future. Didn't start or not starting now or it just will start in the future. For the present perfect, started in the past and is still completing up till this moment in the present or the moment of speech. For the past perfect, when you have only two actions, the first one that finished the first will to be put in the past perfect and the second one will be put in the past simple. The last type is the future and that's a very hideous one. Past, present, and future. Yeah, okay, whatever you, everything you just wrote was, it just looks like hieroglyphics to me. <laughs> Actually, hieroglyphics is very, very easy. I'll just tell you. For the future perfect, I'll have been cool. It means that this action of being cool will end at a specific time in the future. That's your action. And we are speaking about this moment of the action, the moment when the action will be completed or will finish. So, all of these, Muhammad, are speaking about actions after all we use the tenses to tell our action i play i eat i study all of that are actions so we need just to tell these actions are happening when or where in the timeline once you understand this it's gonna be pretty easy to know when exactly to use each one. Of course, the lesson itself is easy to just tell which action is this. Like for example, rain had flooded the street. Rain had flooded. So you have had and past participle. So it's called past perfect tense. Just like that. Bottles sat on our side way. Sat. So sat is past simple. I have poet. Have poet. Have and past participle. It's called present perfect. Will have fallen. Will plus have plus past participle. It's called future. Perfect. Teacher, is it the past simple as a... Uh, I'm sorry, again, your voice is lagging. What? Is the past simple the same as the past? Is the past simple the same as what? Past. Yeah. Here in the present, present simple. Past simple, future simple. Because we have other types of present, past, and future. That's why we call them uh, simple. Present simple, subject and verb. Without any adding, if the subject is plural, and add SOES as if uh, the subject is singular. Like he plays, I go. Past simple, subject, and the second form of the verb. I ate, I did. Future, I will, and the verb in infinite. So, the, sent, the lesson itself, to identify the basic tenses, identifying is easy. But the most important is to understand why are you using each one of them. That's the most important for me. If you learn how to use each one of these tenses, 
then you would face no problem in the English grammar ever again. And if you truly understood what we do today, you can just solve that as a homework practice. Just to change the underlined verb into the tense and the parentheses. It's a pretty easy. Like studies in present and the past perfect had stood. Answers will answer. Plays have played. Speak spoke. Read were read. So it's pretty easy. But once again, try to understand why are we using each of these sentences. Unfortunately, the session is over and see you in the next session. Goodbye. Goodbye.